Halt!
greatest ever coaches to have ever coached in South Africa, Mr. Clive Barker. I thank you all. I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for the support that you've given the Barker family in the build-up to our gathering here today. And I think I have not seen in a very long time so many different levels of legends that are gathered here today from times that we were all still young, dreaming about this beautiful game of football. And guess what? Over five decades of involvement in football has been one common name, Clive Barker. And it is no secret how much he loved the game. It is no secret how much he loved South Africa. And it is also no secret how much he loved diversity. And that is why the success of 1996 still steers very, very clear in our minds as to why that was one of the greatest ever and it's going to take a long time for us to get back there and I think in all of that and in a very unconventional way I think let's give him a big big round of applause ladies and gentlemen I'd like to acknowledge while we're still standing 
the MEC for Etia, Babu Duma. I'd like to acknowledge the Barker family, all the Barker family members who are here with us today. Our deepest condolences. We've also got the CEO of Spa Group South Africa, Mr. Max Oliver, who's here. The MD of Build It South Africa, Rob Lister. Les Philip Ingosi Muelo Nongonyana, the former staff of Vice President, is also here present with us. And the man at the helm of South African football right now, Dr. Danny Jordan, the KZN Sports Confederation, Utami Mkunu. Also here representing the Premier Soccer League, Professor Ronnie Schloss, Safa KZN, Babungwenya, Eteguini Safa, Kabaze Lumkize, all regions, ladies and gentlemen of KZN, and I know that there are plenty of you who are here today. The KZN Sport Academy, Mr. Skosana, the Amazulu President, Babu Sandi Lezungu, all the former Bafana Bafana legends who are here present with us. And when I talk about legends, I also talk about I was jokingly saying as we came in that it's rare to see two professors uh, sitting next to each other. Uh, Professor uh, Ngubane, who's here, and of course the one and only Peruvian international, Augusta Palacios, ladies and gentlemen. So it's all manner of legends that have been here through many, many decades, all coaches that are present at different levels uh, from national to professional, the amateur levels, and all those that are doing their best to emulate what Clive Barker was all about. All the football supporters, because that was the ethos. You look at every single video of Bafana Bafana in action during Clive Barker's time. There were packed stadia, there was beautiful football, and when I see the likes of Mama Joy, Saddam Make, when I see uh, everybody else that is here, um, I think I also saw Botha outside in his traditional Bloom Celtic uh, outfit, uh, you know, never mind that the club doesn't exist no more, but the heart and the desire exist in him to be here. So welcome one and all. So all the football supporters who are present here today, and more especially to thank the South African government for what they've done, their support to the Barker family, their support in making sure uh, that we have this provincial uh, funeral that we have here today in the category two. So, as I say to one and all, you are here for a purpose, you're here for a reason, and that's to support the dog, that's to say farewell to him, and also give him the rightful farewell that I think you and I know that he deserves. Thank you. And with that in mind, um, I'm not going to be here alone. I've also got to acknowledge, uh, I'll call him my host. I'm co-hosting. I'm back home in KZN, Itigwina Kakasin. So we'll make this also about a celebration of a very, very special life. And also to acknowledge uh, Reverend uh, PLP Ukumede. Uh, he was the chaplain and somebody that I'll be leaning on very, very dearly to uh, here today. And with that, stay standing as we begin the singing of our national anthem.
we have you standing, ladies and gentlemen. Let me invite the chaplain, Reverend Piel Pico Mende, uh, to come onto the podium. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and Gracious and loving God, we are gathered here today. We thank you for the life of Clive Parker. Yes, it is painful together for this reason. But in the midst of pain, we give great thanks for your servant who has worked tirelessly for our country. As we hold this funeral service, we remember all the good times we have spent with him. We recount all blessings we have received through his life. We thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful ways you have used our departed loved one in the life of every person gathered here. We commit this time of remembrance to you. Father, I commit every person in this room and all those who are following this service online. Let your Holy Spirit move in our midst. I already see the battle beginning here on stage uh, between myself and the chaplain. The microphone war will continue. I'll be bringing it here, and then he'll step up and he'll play a 442 here. So the battle lines have been drawn, and that's the beautiful thing about the image that Clive Barker sends to each and every one of us. And without any waste of time, and we're going to run this very strictly. The speakers will come through. There's a five-minute allocation. And yes, then there'll be tight marking. So when you feel or hear somebody next to you, just know that a Gavin Lane tackle is about to descend upon you. So I'll just ask in honor to try get through the program that we try and adhere. I know there are many, many stories. And if I had to let a person like Mark Williams come on stage, there will be a Netflix documentary already, because we'll need a few days to get through just one human being. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, for the reading of the obituary, can I please invite on stage Margaret Monovic to please come through onto stage, please. to all of you. I feel very honored and privileged to have been asked to speak about Clive. Clive Barker? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Thank you. Clive Barker is one of South Africa's most successful coaches, having won league and cup titles at club level, 
and having led South Africa to African Cup of Nations glory in 1996. As a player, he had a distinguished career at Durban City and Durban United, making his professional debut at just 17 years of age. He was on the verge for signing for Leicester in England, but a serious knee injury put paid to his playing career. In 1973, he started establishing the team as an African powerhouse, easily topping their 1996 Nations Cup qualifying group. South Africa was awarded the rights to host the tournament after initial hosts Kenya withdraw and the team went on to win the tournament on home soil, beating Tunisia 2-0 in the final. Clive always maintained that the presence of former President Nelson Mandela was the reason South Africa won in 1996, and he famously gave his winner's medal to the iconic leader. The team rose to the number one ranked team in Africa and the top 20 in FIFA's world ranking system, holding their own against the likes of Germany, Holland, the Czech Republic, France, and Argentina, and in 1997 famously led a star-studded Brazil 2-0 at half-time before succumbing 3-2 at the final whistle. Later that year, Clive led the team on a successful World Cup qualifying campaign that ended in triumph when a Phil Massinga goal was enough to beat Congo Brazil, Brazzaville at Soccer City ensuring South Africa's qualifying to the France 1998 World Cup. After returning to Amazulu in 1998, Clive joined Santos two years later and won the Bob Save Super Bowl with the Cape Town team in 2001, beating Sundowns in the final. Stints with Zulu Royals, Manning Rangers, Ball as coaches and administrators, broadcast pundits, and media personalities. Club coaches such as Pizzo Mosamani from Al Halal, Steve Compella from Sundowns, Gavin Hunt from Supersport, Eric Tinkler from Cape Town City, Sean Bartlett, Cape Town Spurs, and Andre Aronsa, Supersport all played under Clive at some stage and recognized Clive's coaching style as an inspiration to their own coaching careers. Clive's nephew, Steve, is the highly rated coach at Stellenbosch Football Club. Clive was born on the 23rd of June, 1944, in Durban to Robert and Patsy Barker. He passed away on 10th of June 2023, just short of his 79th birthday, and is survived by his wife Yvonne, sons John and Gavin, daughters-in-law Marilyn and Lisa, and grandsons Garcia, Caleb, Byron, Eli, and Luca. He married his beautiful ballet dancer wife Yvonne in 1967 and was a loving and, supportive, su su a loving and supportive husband and father as she was during his career to him. Clive got on well with everybody and everybody loved him. We say goodbye today to a popular and successful football player and coach. We say goodbye to a dedicated family man and we say goodbye to a friend of the nation. Thank you. for reading the obituary. Ladies and gentlemen, 
allow me to greet you all with protocol observed in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A special greetings to the Baka family. May the Lord be with you during this time. We have come to the time of tributes and I am going to start with the tribute on behalf of children by John and Gavin Baka. May I request both of them to come to the stage and they will come and give their tribute. John and Gavin. Sure, quite a day, eh? Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Barker family, we would like to thank all the dignitaries, government officials, both provincial and national, friends, friends of the family, soccer players, the soccer fraternity. My mother created an environment at home here in Durban. And regardless of where we were in the world, going through some tough times here in South Africa, he still right to the end believed that South Africa is the best country in the world. His ability to make everyone he met feel better about themselves or want to be better soccer players and sportsmen was something to see. And this again was true with the doctors and the nurses uh, who looked after him. They all remarked at how amazing he was and how positive he was right until the end. He asked them questions. He wanted to know about their lives. Even though he was lying in bed, he was just the most incredible positive person. And even those doctors and nurses said they couldn't believe how he had touched their lives in such a short space of time. He was a coach right up to the end. <laughs> I want to thank all those 96 team, uh, those players that are here today, especially Dr. Kamalo. He's uh, had an operation. You can see him in the cost. Thank, do thanks, Doc. Just um, maybe should uh, retire from those legend games. But every one of the, those players, and, and Margaret alluded to in, in the obituary and stuff, that all those players have gone on to do something in football. So whether it's Sean Bartlett getting promoted to the Premiership last night, or Andre Aronsa, um, all those players have been involved in football, and we just want them to continue the legacy that he created. That we're all here for football, we all love football, and for me his legacy is those players are going to continue um, coaching and, and giving back to football like he did. So, just like to thank those players. They like our brothers and sisters, um, and yeah. And I just think, um, just it's quite ironic um, that we're in the place um, today. I just remember in 1982, Durban City won the won the league, and to celebrate, they wanted to come and watch a movie called Escape to Victory. Mm. Um, but under apartheid laws, um, the coloured and black players that were in the team weren't allowed to watch. So they made a special arrangement that on a Sunday. Durban City would come and watch that movie. Um, and I believe there were small things, but my father played a role in breaking down those barriers so that we got rid of the evil of apartheid and that 14 years later he coached a team to win the Nations Cup and it really was a rainbow team. And just all those players that are continuing with his legacy as coaches and stuff, I just want to say thank you. Thanks. Well, a big thanks to both John and Gavin. Very difficult and tough time given the kind of relationship that they would have had, father and son, father and sons. And they probably won't tell you, but the amazing work somebody like uh, Gavin has done throughout his entire career, uh, capturing the kind of images uh, that we would have seen in so many different publications that we enjoy when it comes to football. Uh, Gavin has been in the forefront of that. Uh, so imagine the son capturing the victory and success of his father in a professional manner like that and opening up a very successful business on the back of all of that. And uh, also on the side of John, a renowned filmmaker, uh, somebody who the past couple of years has also been putting together a documentary uh, regarding 
the rise of Bafana Bafana, obviously spearheaded by none other than Clive Barker. And I hope that uh, that particular documentary slash movie uh, would be out soon so that for all of the 2000s, as they call them, I uh, would be able to appreciate uh, the kind of coach uh, that Coach Clive Barker was. So, guys, uh, condolences to you. And Yvonne, everybody else that is here, um, I, I did say earlier on uh, that when it came to Clive, uh, Clive will be very, very straightforward. He would say, you keep asking me for these interviews. You know I don't have a cell phone. Here's my wife's number. Please speak to her. You know, she'll sort everything out. And um, I think through so many different years, uh, I got used to that, that routine and that format. Um, a man that I think his, his, his cell phone that he, he had was like an original old, probably it was a Nokia. Uh, I don't even think he knew how to charge it in the end though, but guess what? Clive will make it for all the interviews on time. EFF Secretary General Marshal Lamini uh, also joins us. Marshal, I recognize you, I see you. Thank you so much for being here. I know a great lover of the beautiful game of football, see him at the stadium a lot. So again, whether it's about supporters, I see different clubs congregated here. Whether it's about politics, I see different political groupings also gathered here. And again, it shows the strength of the men. Maybe the one thing I didn't mention that Clyde Barker really respected was the role that the media played. And I just want to acknowledge each and every single member of either the Fourth Estate, television, social media, new media, all of that that has developed now, uh, just to welcome you here uh, because Clive really respected what media was all about, respected the role that media played in transforming what was happening onto the field uh, to the households around the country. And it's by no surprise that part of the three that I'm going to call up on stage to all come up at the same time uh, Param Josephs, uh, let me call Mark Gleason, and also George Dunnelly to please come up onto the stage. And you can tell these were people that really, really knew Clive Barker well. So, without any waste of time, gentlemen, if you could please ascend to the stage. Very accomplished, again, in their own rights. And people that would have either interviewed, interacted, played for, Clive Barker, we welcome them on to give their tributes. Good morning. Good morning, uh, everyone. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a day that uh, I never believed would happen, that uh, I've got to stand here and say a few words of our dear friend, Clive Barker. And I'll say, I use the word our, because Clive was everyone's friend. Uh, and Clive's biggest friends were the underdogs. That's who Clive liked spending time with. And uh, before I continue, uh, I just want to say, I miss Clive's humor. He had a hell of a sense of humor. And a few years ago, we went to one of our colleagues' uh, funerals, and Clive was one of the speakers, and later it was me. And when I went to sit down, he nudged me, and he said, can you imagine if we actually spoke the truth about our man there? <laughs> so that was Clive. Uh, was a wonderful somebody. We're going to miss him deeply and sorely. Uh, Clive, I worked with him at uh, Marisburg United, I worked with him at Manning Rangers, and we worked together at the Mattress King, where Clive was our brand ambassador for many, many years, and we spent so much a time together. Uh, I want to say Clive loved his family. His family was his life, Yvonne. You and the kids, the grandkids. He was so proud of everyone, what you achieved in ballet and 
He was you guys' biggest supporter. And I must tell you, because there's many sportsmen and sportswomen here, that the biggest champions are the families. Because you guys are never at home. You're playing away, you're traveling, you're training. And the family don't have your for many important occasions. And Clive was one of them, but I must tell you, your yearly getaway at San Lemire was everything to him. Playing with the kids, the grandkids, being with you all, he treasured those times. And when we talk about patriotic and when we talk of son of the soil, Clive was a true son of the soil for South Africa. He loved the country. He loved the people. Clive was so optimistic about everything. To see his big mate here, Henry, Clive would tell me so much a story, so many stories about you and him. He loved you to bits, Henry. Clive was just a good human being. When he spoke about his 96 team, he spoke about them with so much a love. He referred to them as his babies. Clive was the people's person. He was the player's coach. He would stand for his players first and foremost. And he'll tell me straight, Param, they do the job for me in the field of play. And that was Clive. Clive was a loyal somebody, a humble man, hearing all his accolades here today. He gave everyone the time of day. It's not about how much you had in your pocket or who you were. His friends were the people on the streets that would rush around him wherever we went for a picture and it was never a hassle with Clive. Clive had a small holding out in Richmond, past Richmond, a place called the Village of Burn. And he really enjoyed it. Even if he coached out of town, out the city, whenever he came back to Durban, he would take a drive to the Village of Burn and he'd just walk around his farm and he'd say to me, you know, Param, just being here gives me a couple more months in my life. Clive enjoyed the simple things in life. Even when it came to negotiations at uh, contracts, Clive was not after the money. Clive was just passionate about football and footballers and developing and winning games. And he'd rather be on the pitch training the players rather than talking about money. Clive was not someone that worried too much about money. He was an easygoing somebody, a passionate somebody. And to be here today and to see government giving him such a nice send-off, we thank you. Clive deserves this. He was a nice somebody. He done us all proud. We'll miss him. I'll miss him. He was my buddy, my true friend. He took ill a couple of years ago. That started with his balance, him losing his balance, and then it just got from one thing to the other. And the last couple of months, it's been horrible for those of you who know Clive and what he was about. He fought a brave fight right till the bitter end. And to see him in the state he was, wasn't a nice thing. But I want to tell you all in ending, Clive knew the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to, with me to church on many occasions. Clive knew the word of God. And I want to say to the family, in ending, Matthew 5 verse 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. Look to the heavens for your comfort. People will come and go, but the Lord will always be there. Rest in peace, in peace, Coach Clive. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is George Dernerly, and I was one of Clive's favorite players. Um, 
I think the exact phrase was, I was in his top 500 white strikers to come from Montclair. <laughs> uh, but I'll take it. Um, before I knew him as a coach at Amazulu, um, I knew him as John and Gavin's dad. Uh, 1985 when I moved back to Durban and uh, ended up with the wrong crowd uh, and the leader was John Barker and uh, we used to go to the Barker house and uh, there's one particular day that stands out. Uh, John and I were tanning our magnificent teenage bodies in the sun around the pool and Clive arrived home, uh, I think he was working at Puma at the time and uh, I now believe in telep telepathy because Clive walked in and he had the brightest pair of brand new white shoes on that you've ever seen. And John and I looked at each other and you could see the spark. And we started to walk towards Clive and he, he took a back step and he said, what do, what do you snappers up to? And we rushed him. We picked him up and he kept saying, no, not the shoes, not the shoes. And we threw him in the pool. And then uh, six years later, he was my Amazulu coach at preseason training and uh, took us to the beach and we had a teammate called Julius Chidwa, almost as tall as Mark Leeson. And Clive looked at me and he said, remember that time you and John threw me in the pool? Julius is your partner. Put him on your back. He started running up and down the sand dunes. His memory was unbelievable. As much as you can't compete with everything that's been said about him over the last few days, but the sense of humor, the sense of humor always stood out. Uh, I mean, I know right now he'd be saying, oh, it's a little bit over the top, all this stuff. Uh, after training, now and then he'd do a little detour and we would end up at the St. George's Hotel near Albert Park. And I'd say, Mr. B, you know what's going on? No, gotta go, and, gotta go and say hello to a couple of mates. And there were guys there that remembered the Eddington greatest team of 1963 and a couple of guys from the 70s and whatever, and people that were maybe a little bit down on their luck. And Clive would go in and ask everyone what they wanted to drink, and they all knew Clive. And he'd get the drinks in, and then he'd turn to me and say, get your wallet out, you tight. <laughs> Mr. B, I'm, I'm on 1,500 rand a month. <laughs> yeah, get it out. And I'd buy the drinks. Luckily, it wasn't too often. But it was those conversations with the real Clive Barker, sitting with those guys, just making them feel special. He made all his players feel special. He made us... He made average players good, good players better, and he made the better ones great. A lot of them are here today. Um, we will miss him, but we are thankful that he was in our lives. God bless him. George Durney buying drinks, that's not a true story. <laughs> I'm greatly honored, ladies and gentlemen, to be asked by the family to speak about someone whose uh, achievements had a profound effect on my career, and um, everyone needs a little fortuitous helping hand in life. I started my professional career as a football reporter right here in Durban in 1985. That's exactly 40 seasons ago now. I'm no advert for career advancement, still doing the same job. But the first season, I remember as still the best season. Clive Barker was the coach, Bushbucks was the team, and they were just absolutely sensational, uh, romping to the title that year. And you can imagine the delight of a rookie reporter covering a winning side, full of charisma, exciting to watch, on their way to the championship. What a way to start a career, plus dealing with a coach who was kind, who was helpful, who was encouraging. Um, and I continue to cover Clive and his achievements over the next three decades, his generosity of spirit, his patience, his humor, and of course his brilliant storytelling never wavered. But I don't want to talk about Clive and I today. I'd like to rather talk about Clive Barker and his place in the history of our beloved game in this country. And I think there are three things that we should remember about Clive. First of all, his place amongst those who broke down barriers in this country. In his um, obituary, you would have heard that he was at Amazulu in 1974. He also worked, I've discovered in the library, 
at Golden Arrows in 1974. A white man going into the townships in 1974, that's a full 20 years before changes happened in this country, was indeed rare. And he was certainly amongst the first whites to coach what was then an only black league, the NPSL, and his contribution would have been immense. I don't think you can underestimate what that was. Clive, I don't think was a political animal. I never had a political discussion with him. He was in the townships for the football. But however inadvertent what he did there, it was one of those many, many important little knocks against the system of the time. So I think his first place we must remember him as a, one of those who broke barriers at a time when it wasn't fashionable to break down those barriers. And the players, of course, that he worked with at Golden Arrows and Amazulu, I think would have reveled in the love that he showed them, in the care that he had for them, and in the way that he also embraced their culture. Um, I remember Clive knowing quite a lot of Zulu, learning Zulu ways, and I think that stood him in great stead for his career later on. Many years later, when he was the coach at Durban City, when they used to play against Morocco Swallows at the George Goch Hostel, he would be pouncing up and down on the sideline doing a usut, usut, to get the mine workers, the migrants who were at the George Goch Hostel, not to support Swallows, but to support Durban City, who in those days were mostly made up of, uh, of white players. Um, that charisma was a really huge thing about Clive. I think the second thing that we must remember him for in terms of his career is his work, of course, with Bafana Bafana. Winning the Cup of Nations in 1996 is his crowning, crowning glory, but um, the way we got there and what he did to get us there, I think must be recognized and must not be underestimated. When he took over as Bafana coach, uh, he was coach number four in two years. In fact, if you're technical about it, he was actually coach number five. We had five coaches in the first two years of the national team. That tells a little bit of its own story. And they were, we were really, in those first two years, going nowhere. We'd lost two qualifying campaigns already. Clive was the rudder that just steered the ship. And slowly he put it all together. Perhaps, um, and he was the first to admit this, it went beyond where he thought it would go. He was surprised at the success initially, but he built that 96 team into the success that it was. And he built, I think, a band of brothers. He built a family. He built a successful collective. I'm sure we will hear from some of them uh, later on today. And they exceeded all expectation at that stage in 1996 to win that Cup of Nations. No one really gave us any chance, even though we were the hosts. So that is another massive achievement, I think, that mustn't be underestimated. And of course, it's become more and more of a, a standout moment for our football over the years, as unfortunately, none of the subsequent Bafana generations have been able to emulate 96. And then the third thing about Clive Barker that I think we must remember is the quality of the teams that he built. Durban City champions, 81, 82. I think there are a few of them here today. Tough, resilient, um, overachievers, given all the obstacles that were put in their way, but a very good football playing side. Then that fabulous Bushbucks team of 85, I can still name them off the top of my head. Waterson, Turnbull, Gonzalez, Chester, Mark Tovey, uh, Wicks, Professor Ngobani, who's here today, uh, Ramaruzzi, Bennett Gondwe, Kelvin Peterson I saw, Mike Mangana, just an absolutely fabulous team. A, a well-oiled machine and they played magnificent football. Bafana 96, I think the quality was there, but it needed to be put together. And just, you know, I think picking Dr. Kamala and Shoes Show was not terribly difficult, but recognizing how a Linda Butelezi and a Eric Tinkler could assist them and make them play better took uh, a good coach's eye. And that, that was his gift. That was what made Clive the artist, the coaching artist that he was, that ability to put talent to, to take talent, put it together, send it out into battle, full of confidence and full of self-belief. Clive was celebrated for his man management ability, um, but it's something that I 
that he didn't really like being known for. I think he bristled against that perception that Clive was all about the man management and not much else. He was much more than that, and I think he showed that in the teams that he assembled. They really were fabulous on the eye and fabulous to watch. I think Clive Barker has a very prominent place in our football history, in our sporting history, and I think we mustn't forget the role that he's played, the magnificent achievements that he's made to uh, lift South Africa and make us a wonderful footballing nation. Well done, Clive Barker. You had a wonderful career. Thank you. Thank you so much to the three friends that have come up here. At this stage, may I request a colleague to come and perform? A colleague. Over to you, colleague. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul oh it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well it is well it is well O Gushege Moyawami Gushege Moyawami Moyawami Gushege 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 Those who live by faith, when in times like these they say, It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well, it is well. So in any way, in he see you, in a little
keyo onti tinche enge pati olipa lipa tula dona u ukufunu to homo So I have a friend in Jesus. Jesus is there all the time. In times of trouble, he, he is there. In times of trouble, he is there. We lean on him all the time. That's why I'm going to sing this song that says, Dinom Shobo Ong Yesu. Dinom Shobo Ong Yesu. Oye na u. Uno otando dinom shobo gem nanti ino shobo aku o Yesu ye na ye to hu uno uno tan dinalom shobo gem nanti ino dinalom shobo. Oh, 
so who ya sees again who who ya who ya sees again so who no tongue do ya no who who no who no tongue Hey, <laughs> Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the one thing about the great class of 1996 is exactly that, is that they were a great class. Uh, from leader, from the captain, to the man that came off the bench and scored. And I think today would be a very proud day, I think, for Clive Barker, because as Gavin mentioned earlier on, uh, we saw the provider of the two goals in 1996. Jersey number 15, Dr. Kumalo walking in and crutches. He is heavily strapped, had an operation about, what, 48 hours ago. Uh, he continued playing this game that he loved, football. You didn't look at his ID and passport and see how old he is. Doc just wants to play football. He was playing football in the maternity ward. He's still playing football now. So it doesn't really matter where football is played. So I mention him coming here injured. And there was also a mention of a Sean Bartlett earning promotion to the Premier Soccer League last night. That's the class of what? 96. It continues the legacy. It continues to elevate what Clive Barker espoused. And I throw it back because in the corridor when I heard the name of Mervyn Hopflesh, I almost fainted because this was a guy I was reading about in soccer news, uh, back in those days, sharp shoot soccer mirror. I listened to the commentary. They spoke about the man who could throw the ball the furthest than anybody else that is humanly possible. And for me to just see some of the class, I mean, hey, Rodney Charles, everybody, it, it's really touching to know what a connect Clive Barker was as far as football is concerned. Whether you knew the guys, uh, whether you knew them when they had afros or now when they've got bless corps or cheese corps, it didn't matter. We all age, it's life, it happens. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, these flags that we're carrying, I, I, I do ask Mama Joy and everybody to stand up as we welcome our 96 winning captain, Mr. Neil Tovey. Again, Sugume Pela Mama Joy, Pela. Wave those flags because that's exactly how we were at the old FNB Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil Tovey. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, to Yvonne, to John, to Gavin, and the Barker family. Um, what a man. 
a really, really special man. But I'm not, uh, I've been asked and acknowledged with the class of 96, but I think I must just ask all the football players that are here today, all the different generations, if you can please stand. That, that clap touched. Thank you. Yeah, my first encounter with Clive Barker was as a 16 year old at some provincial trials. And his first comment to the people around him was, Who's that player with such big feet? He surely can't make it. And, um, and then the story continues. And um, through the years at Durban City and Bushbucks, and I see, there's a, as I said, there was a, there's a loads and loads of players that are here today that went through great times. And all those clubs and teams, there was one common denominator that, that all those teams had, and that was Clive's loves for his players. They were all great teams. Great players, great teams, great combinations. They could not have been great combinations without a mentor, a fatherly figure that at any moment in time could not only solve your football problems but also solve your domestic problems. And then he obviously went on and, and touched the lives of many others, the friends included, along his pathway. A lot has been said, but as asked, I'll just touch on a few stories. Um, when Clive was asked to take the Bafana Bafana team in 1994, uh, we got together, just Clive and I. Clive asked me just to meet him at the Mill Park Holiday Inn. And uh, we had a discussion around Neil, what can make this team tick? And I said, because he said to me, this team is loaded, loaded with talent. And I said, and we discussed, and I said, Clive, all you're going to need to do is just be yourself. Because of my past experiences with Durban City with him, obviously I'm a Zulu, um, and then obviously going on to this Bafana team, I'd been there since 1992. And I said, this team just needs love. That's all it needs is love. And, and that's, I don't even have to ask you to do that, because I know you'll do it. They need to have that bit of self-belief back brought into them, made them feel welcome at camp, and I knew that would certainly happen. When you came into camp, the environment was one of pure joy and happiness. And when you've got enjoyment in your life, you're going to certainly do it to the best of your ability. You're going to play better. You're going to enjoy where you are. And you've got to understand the journey that was traveled since 92. In 92 to 94, there was a Bafana team that was made up with club players. Club players that had been playing against each other week in, week out. And it was fragmented purely because of this club issue. And then you had a person like Clive Walker that would tell him, forget about your clubs. You're now coming to camp to perform as one team. And that was really, really important. Even during the camp, which was sometimes seven days, sometimes 10 days, he would always allow time generally during the middle of the week, trained in the morning on the Wednesday, and then obviously all the players are flying in Monday, Tuesday from wherever they're playing elsewhere in the world, and obviously the local locals. And we, on the Wednesday, would train in the morning, and then you'd allow them, allow a whole squad to have Wednesday afternoon off, 
to do what they please. And as you know, some of us were from out of town, some of us were from in town, the likes of Shoes Mashu, and I've also got to acknowledge Shoes Philemon, John Moeti, and um, Siswe that have also passed on. And he would say, go do what you want. There was a few of us, we, wanted, we would have gone and played some golf, Mark Williams included. And Clive would always say, I want to play golf with Mark Williams. And he'd say, why? He says, because I have to keep an eye on him when he goes into the bush. <laughs> when he hits a ball in the bush, I don't want to see him picking the ball up and throwing it over. I've got to keep an eye on him. And there was always this competitiveness, even in that situation, made light, light-hearted work. And as I said, shoes and them, they would go for haircuts, and then shoes would wear a cap for the rest of the week, and you didn't know on the weekend what, he was looking, what kind of haircut you would have. Doc, Doc would go get another suit or another. I don't know if it was from his cricket days, he used to always say that he, was, he should have opened with... Um, with Lee Irvin and all those type of players. He's always talking about his cricket days. He was a far better cricketer than he was a football player and all that. And a wicket keeper of note and all that. But I said, Clive, when you're going down behind the stumps, how the hell is the ball always going to go over your head? You're so short. So, um, but Clive, was from maybe from the cricket days, was a hell of a, hell of a superstitious person. Very, very superstitious person. And in that tournament of 96, when we won the opening game against Cameroon, he had this knack that when he came down to breakfast, of riding on the chair at breakfast, and generally we, we sat and chatted, and he would ride on this chair backwards, backwards. I said, Clive, you can't do that. You know, you're the coach, he's respectable, act responsible. He says, no, no, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. So I don't know what my instinct was. I just picked up the tables, uh, the spoon and I hit him on his testicles. <laughs> and it sort of love and this is not going to happen again. Next game against Egypt, I didn't see Clive. And we lost the game. We lost, we had already qualified, but he lost the game. So him being so superstitious, there he comes down for the Algeria game. And as it went through the tournament, like that, he said, no, okay, I'm here, hit me. <laughs> and as it went on and on, I used the bigger spoon and his testicles got bluer and bluer and bluer. <laughs> Sorry, Yvonne. Yeah, so that was what, we, what Clive Barker was about. Um, uh, I really love the family and the rights of Barker. So, Doc Kumalo, I'm going to give you time. Uh, I don't know how many hours you need, just to quickly get on stage. Um, and words. So, every member, I will ask you, as I say, I'm breaching protocol here, uh, but forgive me. I uh, could have done the same. Uh, so, please, guys, I'm not going to call you by name. You're scattered all over the place. Uh, but please, can we gather around your coach, your father? Let's pay respects and I'll say to Clive. For putting a smile and stuck in face. Clive for molding the six. You were a good husband, a father and a great father. And you we love you, Clive. I don't want to say go, but it's okay. We got to an
a transformative life means to the football players. Um, I think we all know and probably the two gentlemen that are left here next to Clive, we might know him or both of them as having played for Kaiser Chiefs. But it was again through the guidance of Clive Bark that they were able to go to End Road for Lamb's crew, went to South America, and legacy is continued. And I could say the same for many of the gentlemen that were here standing in front of us a short ago about their illustrious. So again, to all South Africans and leaders that are given an opportunity to make change. I think uh, baby Jake Matlala, the family, are still waiting for the many promises that were made to them at the funeral. Let's not do that. Sula sim zumu mu, azumu si amkonda. Tina ma zula sim zumu mu, asim zumu mu si amkonda. Sabo. To the family life, very sad. Then the acronym A M A Z U L U Amazon will come very handy. I'll be very brief. A Clive Barker was ahead of his time. I think Mr. Glisson put it very well. It was 1974. In the early 70s, when I was doing uh, primary schooling at Tumlazi, Clive Barker was a familiar face in his diminutive physical appearance at Tumlazi. People like uh, Professor Ngubane think those days were still playing for Umlazi, cheap bombshell, roaming the streets there. He was ahead of the time. It was not familiar to see a white person in the in friendships. But Clive was there. He was amazed and he amazed the people. So it was no wonder that affiliation was to be rewarded handsomely all among them. Humility flowed through his veins. L, he loved his craft. Even when he was not coaching, he was not playing, he was associated with the sporting groups. Because he loved his craft. He loved his people. He loved his teams. L, again, he was loyal. That he was married for so long. His family speak so lovingly about him. That's a lot of a man. I've not heard anything said about Clive and associated with betrayal. He was loyal. He's an icon, a living legend, and living beyond the grave. 
you. And I'll say most importantly, Clive was also to through and through. He embraced our way of doing things. When Amazul was playing, I've Wainenda, Equifa. Sometimes we intimidate his opponents by pretending to be throwing some moti. That's Clive. His blood was green. And at Usutu, we loved Clive. And it is a fact. The most successful coach for Usutu ever. And it is no wonder that the last cup we lifted in 1992, who was sitting on the bench, Clive Barker. And now that he is our ancestor, when we go to him some, we'll also call on his name, Clive Barker, Kulumandot. Make it happen. We need another cup, and so does Bafana Bafana. In closing, I want to recognize my predecessor as president and chairman of Amazulu, Ubabu Sokela, he is here with us. Tinage, we are the only team in this country which is celebrated through song. There's a song about Amazulu in every genre. You talk to Amanda Black, he says, Amazulu. Eti vulega, vulega, vulega mazulu. Siye mtu mina se makaya. Siye ibiza. Siti tina mazula si mzumu mundu. Awu, awu, siya mkunda. Tina mazula si mzumu mundu. Siya mkunda. Even in gospel, who calls his colleague and does it? Change Amazon. Atebelo, can't not sit alone. You all Amazon Atebelo, na na to sit alone. Amazon. Hello, Sitting in those few words, Clive Parker. You are gone, you are not forgotten. You should not forgotten. At a very special heart, part in our hearts, and we love you. Farewell, the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Club. He has a mission for Amazulu to win the domestic. And I think I'm going to give it a few more years, according to him. Those were his words when he took over from the club. Um, you know, from Ubab Sokel when he did. And I'm sure he will live by that. You know, he's not a successful businessman by chance. They set targets, they aim for the targets, and they achieve what they need to achieve. And we wish you well so much. Thank you so much for those that words. I think in many, many people's minds and their hearts, Clive Barker resonates and has spoken very fondly and proudly of KwaZulu Natal. Spoken very fondly and proudly about it. And um, I think it's only proper uh, that we allow a message on behalf of the KZN Sports Confederation uh, Mr. Tami Mkun, Mkun Wane, Mkun Wane, Mkun Wane.
thank you, program director, directors, uh, I was worried when uh, Robert came back to the microphone because I was happy that I was coming after Ukwabini. So there would be no need of adjusting the microphone. <laughs> uh, I would like to recognize the family of Clive Parker, recognize the the government leadership, both provincial and uh, national. Also would like to recognize sports, particularly the football fraternity. Also would like to recognize the former professional players who saw it fit well to the big dog. Also would like to recognize all people coming from the different walks of life who felt that uh, Dave Parker was not only for football. Uh, I would not read in the newspapers that uh, I did not speak well. Let me recognize the media so that I'm safe. Uh, being part of this gathering is like um, being part of the crowd that is watching library where he has got a wealth of knowledge and today we are seeing a wealth of knowledge leaving us but what is important is that uh, whilst the that knowledge is leaving but he has multiplied himself amongst many people who are in this room and outside of this room. Guabini indicated that uh, Clive Barker embraced the African culture, particularly the Zulu culture. I remember, I think the late 70s, when I was still a young football follower and Clive was coaching Deppen City and it was going to play against Orlando Pirates. He appeared in a newspaper holding a goat vowing that Pirates will not win the game. If Pirates wins the game he will present Jomo Sono with that goat. He never said money or any goat. And the goat is very important in the Zulu culture. And that was part of his mind games. And uh, I don't want to dwell much on that one, but I think Jomo Sono had the hardest game of his life with Rodney Charles chasing him all over the field. Whilst Rodney Charles was a central defender, but in that particular day, he was roaming wherever Jomo was roaming. So that was part of the art of Clive Parker. So as Guazulu Natal, we are very proud that uh, we had this marvelous personnel coming from our province. We hope that uh, most of them will take and pick up the spear that has been left by Clive Parker and continue where he ended. 
Clive Barker, even in his twilight years, was still involved a lot in development. He has been part recently and, late, and with the latest. The 13 Build It program spearheaded by Amazulu and Build It supported also by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture in the province. He never missed the, ton the provincial tournaments in particular. He would be there. To the family, I just want to pick up a short uh, talk that uh, one man was dreaming walking around the, along the beach. Whilst he was walking ar along the beach with God, he realized that on the sand there were two sets of footpaths, his and, the, and those of, the, of God. But he realized that at some stage, especially during the years when he had some problems and challenges, only one set of footpaths was there. And then he asked God, why were you always with me when I was in good times? But when I had troubles, you are not there because now there's only a single person's food. God said, I realized that it was too tough for you to do yourself. It's where I picked you up. And the set of footpaths that you are seeing, it's not yours, it's mine as God. I walked for you because you could not walk there. Trust God that you all this. Thank you very much. But thank you. Thank you so, so much indeed. I think once again, just uh, espousing to the family and everybody who's gathered here today, uh, the true meaning of a man who did not care from what walk of life you were from. As long as you're a human being, he would acknowledge you, give you the kind of warmth that I think we all deserve as human beings. There will be a performance shortly, uh, but before we get there, uh, Lim Vite on stage. I know that he's been traversing the world, um, asking the world to do what he did in 2010 uh, to allow us to host the FIFA Women's World Cup here in South Africa. And I know that uh, Desiree Ellis and, and her band of Banyana Banyana players are preparing. They're in camp right now uh, to go do battle at the World Cup. I think it's within 40 days or so left before uh, the kickstart of that. And it's important that I mention that because uh, the women have done so well. And uh, you talk to Desiree Ellis and every interview you do with her, she'll uh, never not mention, if it's a lengthy interview, the contribution and the kind of impression that Clyde Barker left on her. And that is why even at a female level, they are African champions. And as they go through uh, to this World Cup, they don't go through there as passengers, but they go through with the to do what and fly this flag of South Africa. So I'm going to invite the president of the South African Football Association, uh, Dr. Danny Jordan, uh, to please come on stage to address us, as well as the Barker family. <laughs> The the Barker family, uh, Yvonne, uh, Clive's wife, John, 
and Gavin and all the members of the Parker family, the members of the class of 96, Clive's special team, members of the provincial government, I heard uh, Chief Mwelo Nonkonyana was here, Mama Joy, Saddam, supporters, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, fellow mourners. The, the South African Football Association would like to extend its heartfelt condolences to the family on behalf of all of our members. I'd like to express our deepest condolences to the wife Yvonne and to the children and grandchildren for your loss on this sad day shared by all of us and shared by our nation. It takes a special person to achieve special things. Clive Parker was special. What he achieved was special. Many of the speakers related his achievements, his undoubted success, and his special humanity. So I want to speak Clive Parker's contribution in a period where the country needed social integration, nation building, and creating new national teams on a non-racial basis. Compare Clive Parker's team from 1994 to the end of his term. And I think the, the image was here, the photo was there of that team. And bring any other national team of this country in the same period, 94. You put up Barkas, 1994, Bafana, and put any other national team. And you can see that Clive Barker knew what this nation wanted knew what would truly represent the nation's team, an integrated national team. And how to build the team. And the team was built in probably the most difficult circumstances because the team's average age was in the late 20s and even in the early 30s. Uh, that was in 1994. It meant that those players played in four separate national associations at the time. We had four national associations in South Africa. We had the NPSL, SANFA. We had the FPL Federation. We had the NFL, FASA. And we had SASA, NSL. And if you look at where those players started, and where their development started as young players in the 80s, it was in four separate associations. So it is probably the most difficult job for any coach to bring players together with such diverse experience, uh, such diverse and maybe even conflicting uh, youth. And then he had to bring it back to a single team. So what did Clive do? Clive did not start building a team. Clive started building a family. And you can see the concept of a family and then the concept of a united team. And you see this concept of family in the 19, uh, 1996 team. I went to see where Motohung's funeral, the family was there. For Masinga's funeral, the family was there. Shoes Masiao's funeral, the family was there. Clive Barker's funeral today, the family is here. So that strong underlying concept that Clive built, that you are the family first, and then you are a team, I think is one of the fundamental reasons for success. Uh, of, of, of Clive Barker. We must also know that 
These players only came into one association in 1991 when SAPA was formed. Before that, there was not a single football controlling body in the country, four separate ones. And that's where they grew up as, as young players. So when Clive came in 94, he realized that this matter must be addressed first. It is no wonder that Nelson Mandela embraced this team. He either phoned, personally visited the team in the hotel, or actually came to the stadium. But he always was in touch because he knew that Clive was building not just a team, he was building a nation. He was integrating the people of our country. And so it's a lesson for all of the coaches that your talent comes from different places. Your players come from different places, different experience in different geographical areas. And also a lesson to us that leaders can come from anywhere. Don't look for players or leaders in one place only. The youngest player of that team or at the age of 23 was Sean Bartlett was the youngest player in the team. And only yesterday, Sean Bar Bartlett achieved what Clive would be very proud of, to take for the second consecutive time his team being promoted into the Premier League. And we want to wish him all the best uh, for the new season coming. The if we can see the, the photo where Nelson F.W. de Klerk, uh, His Majesty King Zalatini, actually sits on the grass with a football team and a trophy. There is no national team in this country that can produce that photo. It's impossible. Where will you see a national team with two presidents and a king on the kneeling? I don't know whether they were kneeling in front of Clive, but Clive was standing at the back looking over them. So maybe they were kneeling, recognizing Clive's special achievement. And so you, you can see the impact that Clive had. And when Nelson Mandela arrived, the first thing he asked, is FW coming? FW must be here. And when the match was over, and of course when the second goal came, it was a huge celebration. And they walked down together and sat on the grass together with a team behind them. You are not going to see another team with a trophy, with a king, presidents on that photo. It's not going to happen. To show Clive's commitment and understanding of the social realities of our country, it's not confined to our own country. It's even outside our country. You know, every team wanted to play Bafana. We played against Brazil at FNB Stadium. At Brazil, 2-0. Dr. Kumalo was magic on that night. For some reason, uh, uh, Clive Parker took Doctor off. I don't know whether he explained or why he was taken off, but Clive will acknowledge I made a huge mistake. Because once Doctor was off, Robaldo, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, uh, they were all streaming, Babetto, and we all saw the overhead kick of Babetto to make it 3-2. We left that moment that we had Brazil finish on the floor, and Clive decided to give them some oxygen, and then they came back and dealt with us. Uh, so, 
everyone wants to us. Then England invited us. And when we arrived, the match was at Manchester. And when we arrived, some of the community members of an area in Manchester called Mosside came and asked, please, we have a problem of youth and gangster violence in our area. We want Clive Barker to come and speak to these youngsters. And of course, Clive was preparing for the match against England. But Clive said, no, no, uh, let's go. I think Mark Williams went with, and a few other players went with to go and talk to those players. As I came here, I got a phone call from the person who actually came to ask that Clive Barker must come and address them is a person called Jeff Thompson and he will tell you what impact Clive had on the youth and how they changed the environment in which they found themselves at the time. And Clive understood and showed concern for social and community issues. Other coaches will say, no, 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 I've got a match tomorrow, I, I, I can't go. Clive went there. So Clive is a nation builder. He cares for the people, cares for the youth. And many of, of us said so. Uh, Clive is a kind of person maybe we should have as a president to build a non-racial, inclusive, participatory, democratic South Africa. He has done that that spirit of the team we must use to continue to build a nation in the image of that team. There's no insiders and outsiders. We're all family. And if we build that as a memory for Clive, we will have a wonderful country. And Clive will smile. Thank you very much. Sponge, Mama Joy, Nikambo, Saddam Make. And once again, a big thanks to President of the South African Football Association, uh, Dr. Danny Jordan inspiring words and I think uh, what, what we take from all of this uh, is us scratching our heads and trying to find out belatedly uh, what we can do to let the memory live long and on and on for many many more years uh, to come fully agree uh, with that notion now um, you might have done a song uh, before when there was still a group uh, together with Benny McCarthy um, Benny didn't know uh, that he'll be at uh, Old Trafford uh, but the song carries on even at Old Trafford all these South Africans that live there uh, they call the UK another extension another province of South Africa so even at Old Trafford you know uh, Zwei Pala's TKZ uh, continues to be very influential uh, but outside of football I mean a learned gentleman a lover of music supremely educated in music at Drakensberg Boys Choir, uh, but then I think it's just the legacy that he carries himself now as an individual uh, that we are so, so grateful that he could come through and share some time with us. So ladies and gentlemen, a musical welcome to the one and only award-winning Zwei Bala. Babu Mkunu mentioned the word goat. Clive Barker, greatest of all time. Uh, the team of 96, um, Clive Barker, that nice time, uh, ensured that a song called Shibobo came about. 
and it entrenched TKZ as the greatest of all time. And uh, it's indeed an honor for me to be here tonight. And uh, uh, I remember these flags, we're waving these. Yeah? You're welcome to stand up and uh, bring back 1996 right here, right now. Or some more. Thank you so much to Zwai for reminding us those times. Thank you, thank you so much. Let us give him a round of applause. Okay. Thank you. At this juncture, may I invite, first let me introduce the MEC for Community, for Economic Development, Tourism and Environment Affairs, and Leader of Government Business, He's also the current chairperson of the ANC in Wazulu Natal province. He has served in the provincial legislature since 2009. And that is Mr. S.A. Duma, who is coming to deliver the eulogy. May we all rise as he comes to the podium. Protocol dictates that when a senior government official comes to address us, we rise. Over to you, Tobin. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you so much, program directors. I'm not going to enter into the fray of vertical and horizontal on the issue of mic. I will make sure. I'm not sure without realizing the might take the stage and just do this on the mic. So we are observing that protocol. No, no, thank you so much, board program directors to them uh, and Baba Umarawa for affording us this opportunity, the Baka family and friends, Umam Yuvon in particular for stelling the shit. The whole country with dedication until his last moment. Ordinary members of society are wondering why he was called the dog. We recall one of his many interviews published by Kickoff magazine last year. He explained the story behind his nickname, open quote, some people say it's for many reasons. I was on the ball a lot of times when I was a player. I just enjoyed it, but I think that dog name come with the Barker surname. So they don't Barker as a synchronage, then he's a dog. He is, was a dog. He was a god in the term, in that lingo, in a very good manner. They married two names. Today, Barker and the dog, close quote. Ladies and gentlemen, message of consolidation that have been outpouring from different parts of the country and from the diplomatic community are an indication of the impact that Clive Barker made throughout his professional life as a player, both as a coach. Judging by accounts given by soccer fans, soccer administration, senior leaders in politics, government, business associates, and ordinary members of society, it is clear that the whole country has been shaken by his untimely departure. We wish to convey our gratitude to His Excellency President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa for declaring this a special provincial official funeral to symbolize his gesture, his data as well. The role that has been played by the Prime of Wazul Natal and the Minister of God who also visited the family were glad of this, of what they did to this family. The words that best describe the life and times of two Afghan Barker are, you are glad that the current minister, Babu Zizigodwa, is reviving and ensuring that school sport is going to be revived and the issue of high excellence and development arousal will be striving as well. So I think those are the issues that deserve an accolade from us and Babu Barker would have been glad to see see South Africa trying to revive those days as well. In 2010, South Africa hosted FIFA, FIFA World Cup on behalf of the continent and collectively. We rose to challenge and went far beyond expectation in hosting what is arguably one of the best World Cup tournaments in FIFA's history and the third 
As a way of preserving Clive Parker's legacy, our approach as provincial government is informed by the commitment towards developing relations in order to influence and improve the environment in which soccer should be played. Inspired by this great motivator, we are in search of the world's best practice, improving quality of soccer. We are serious about promoting good governance and sound soccer administration in court in wrong paint on his way here. But we understand, and when I just looked at him now, I realized that he's sitting next to another former great player who went by the nickname of Michael Jackson. So you've got two dancers next to each other. So the Michael Jackson that I'm referring to is Kelvin Peterson from the very famed uh, Durban Bushbucks, uh, the guys who did such damage during the JPS special uh, knockout, one of the greatest football clubs uh, that we could ever refer back and relate to. We get to thank you so much. we have come to the part whereby we are going to listen to the word of God. Uh, may I invite Reverend Ian Booth to come and do the homily. Ian, I call it a homily because uh, in ten minutes you get the same. I say homily. Ian Booth is the Saint Luke's Communal Church. Uh, we come from the same denomination, myself and him. Uh, so we thank God that we are part of this service. Over to you. But even with that knowledge, we who remain must deal with the reality of this death that has occurred. This death that took Clive from us, from being able to communicate with us and who we could see and touch and feel it's taken Clive from us he's become part of that host of witnesses that the writer to the Hebrews speaks of part of the ancestors whose legacy we seek to honor dealing with the reality of death means that we must do the work of grief which ultimately brings us to healing Richard Raw of the Center for Action and Contemplation in the United States says, death cannot be dealt with through quick answers, religious platitudes, or a stiff upper lip. Grief is not a process that can be rushed, but must be allowed to happen over time and in its own time. <clears throat> and so as each person here grieves, as each member of the family grieves, you'll grieve at different times and in different ways. And that'll require patience from those around us. But we must grieve. Grieving is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of love, a sign of humanity, a sign of dealing with loss. Without the process of working through our grief, we will not find the peace and acceptance that will enable us to live the lives which we have to the full. And so I encourage you all, especially Clive's family, and the many whose lives Clive touched by his humanity and grace, to allow the process of grief to do its work. To do its work in you and each of us so that we can learn to live our lives around the hole that Clive has left in our lives. A hole that won't go away, that won't be filled, but with which we will learn to live while our lives go on and we seek to honor the memory of Clive by the way we live our lives, by the way we treat others, by the way we honor the humanity in others, but the way we see you when we greet you. So born. And so we give thanks to God for the gift that Clive was to us. We commit Clive to God as his life has transformed to that realm which remains a mystery to us. And we allow the work of grief to happen within us to bring us to a place of acceptance and healing. Amen.
Thank you so much to Reverend Ian Booth for those words of encouragement and also for the word of God which has enlightened all of us. Thank you, thank you so much, Ian. Without any waste of time, may I request Gavin and John to come and do the vote of thanks. Gavin and John to come and do the vote of thanks. Hi everybody, uh, on behalf of the Barker family, uh, we would like to thank all the players who played under my dad for coming through here today um, to say goodbye to him. He loved you guys, uh, he had a really special life because of all of you, you made his life so rich uh, and such a fantastic time he had here in South Africa. So thank you to all of you and a round of applause to all those players who are here. I'd also like to thank the Premier of KZN, Amazulu's Sandile Zungu, KZN Sport Federation, Mr. Tami Nkunu, President of SAFA, Mr. Danny Dodan, um, Mr. S.A. Duma. We'd like to thank our friend Zwai Bala. Zwai, thank you so much, sir, for coming through, singing. A beautiful era in our, in our time in South Africa. Thank you for being here. It meant a lot. My dad loved you too. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Robert Marawa, thank you, Rob. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you, sir. Uh, to all the speakers uh, who came through, who came from all, all over the country to be here, and all friends and family who travelled, we'd like to thank you too for being here. Uh, especially the fans and everybody in South Africa who watched the, the the link live and around the world. Thank you to all of you on behalf of my dad. Thank you for being there, thank you for supporting him, and uh, thank you for encouraging him to be so fantastic. Um, I'd also like to thank Dr. Tobile Sefunda for all your amazing team and all you've done for the couple of days leading up to today. I'd like to thank our new brother, Pilani Mbaso. Where's Pilani? And now official member of the Barker family. Thank you for all your help over these days. And uh, Mr. Les Pille, who's also been another family member. Les, thank you so much for all you've done for, for us. Um, and finally, we'd like to say goodbye to Clive Barker, our father. May you rest in peace, Dad. Go well. And we'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much to Kevin and John. At this moment, may I request the parade commander, Captain Tombella from SAPS, to come and commence with the ceremony elements. Ceremonial elements. Kids, we pray a special blessing upon all those who were close to him. Be with them, Lord, and guide them and sustain them during this difficult time. 